ebusian for aha e possible multimedia video kwan so dia e twagu we ye man ga na mu e di kan e di tie nsemwa acc wo east west north and south aha e na obenya emu nche mu ankasa ankasa medin e difference ya true aka possible ba ko bia drop e mo hie pa me pese me se wada je no e ni die kwan so yenko yenko ti nsemwa wo audio we I think that these are all symptoms of a failing economic model, if not a failed economic model. And when you reach this stage, nothing works. Traditional prescriptions do no, long, no longer present as cure. That is where we are. And I'm quite surprised that tariffs, utility tariff, tariffs for water, have gone up only by eight percent yeah i'm quite surprised why because earlier on i'd heard that as a result of the effect of galamse the cost of treatment of water had gone up by 100 mm percent -hmm. you understand so if you have a situation where the cost of treatment has gone up by 100 percent you would expect a corresponding increase in tariffs okay but what is the problem Yes, it is true that the utility companies are burdened. They need additional inflows and so on to be able to maintain current services. That is true. But it's also true that the consumers cannot pay. Okay? <clears throat> and so what do you do under these circumstances? <clears throat> now, for me, the other problem is simply that this increases in tariffs do not provide any assurance that the fundamental problems leading to, to the increases in tariffs will be stopped. In fact, they are growing. So if you accept these increases in tariffs, six months from now, there will have to be more increases in tariffs. One year from now, there will have to be more increases in tariffs. Where do we stop? Meanwhile, the earning capacity of industry, of workers and so on, continues to come down. This is the crisis. <laughs> this is the deep crisis into which we find ourselves. So, merely increasing tariffs doesn't solve the problem. But if you don't increase tariffs also, we are grinding to a halt. This calls for rethinking. This calls for fundamental, you know, non-conventional changes in the management of the national economy. There's no other way. If you accept these tariff increases in six months' time, they will come again. In one year, they will come again. Two years from now, they will come again. In fact, again. it's every quarter now. Meanwhile, the capacity of the consumer to pay is dwindling. And there's no nothing inside to suggest that that capacity is going to improve. The, so, but the... The options that you propose mm -hmm. are not on the table. Mm -hmm. And by virtue of the, the fact that we all know where we are headed towards mm -hmm. in terms of our dealings with the IMF and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, what this means is that if inflation is not tamed, if the currency depreciation is not tamed, um, Obviously, if we don't deal with Galamse, yes, yeah. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. for every quarter, we should be expecting increments. The option to the increment will be um, to have the utilities shut down or engage in outages because we know that government is not in a position to subsidize. And even the program that we are entering into will not even allow for that to happen. Yeah, but that's not the only option. There are many other options, you know, available to us. You know, even though we are embarked on the IMF path, the IMF hmm. program path. Well, I've said that the IMF path is not a solution to the crisis that confronts. No, I'm just dealing with the reality. Okay. Yes, but I'm I've not said... saying that outside. The IMF program, there won't be, there cannot be options. In any case, the government itself thought there was an option. Yeah. And it went on that path and it crashed. Yeah. And it's come to the IMF. So I'm not suggesting that there are no other options. All I'm saying is that the reality is that this is where we are, we are headed.
the reality on the new liberal path. <laughs> but the so new we have an part, ideological. <laughs> the new liberal party <laughs> development is responsible for the collapse of the national economy, mm -hmm. and we have to very quickly move away from that new liberal path, mm. which we have pursued for how many years? You know, has not brought us any solution at all. And if we don't move from there, we have a crisis. I mean, I was listening to one of the text messages that you read. Was it a text message that you read from the news? From the paper. A guy who says that, well, if this is the situation, then I would refer to Bobo. You know, I, Bobo. I, I, I would go back to Bobo. Yes. So. Electricity is not just for looking at our faces and reading newspapers. Electricity is for running the whole of society. Mm -hmm. It's about running industry. It's about running your health services. It has a huge impact on agriculture and so on. So electricity really is at the center of life. And that's how we ought to look at electricity. I mean, if you take water, water is not just about getting a cup into a drinking water and swallowing. You know, water is not just about your capacity to, to put, you know, food together and so on. Water is also at the center of life itself. It impacts on every aspect of our life, on health, on agriculture, on everything, okay? So, in dealing with these problems, we need to have a holistic look. We need to take a holistic look at, at life generally, you know, at, at, at the Ghanaian within his environment and how he survives. And in doing that, I think that the time has come to reject completely the new liberal party development and to begin to think outside the box, you know. I mean, this thing about thinking outside the box, you know, now, we are not just thinking inside the box, huh? in the small corner inside that box. That's where we are stuck. One of the four corners. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are thinking uh, the very you know, small corner you know, inside you know, the box. You know, it's a, form of a, it's a form of a punishment. Yeah. Asking a kid to just face a the corner world. in the world. Mm -hmm. And it appears that that is our uh, thinking when it comes to the economy. Yeah. It's like somebody is deliberately pushed that mm -hmm. into one dark corner mm -hmm. and we're faced there. Mm -hmm. And all we see is the doom and gloom, the darkness in that particular corner. Mm -hmm. And although we are not chained or plastered to the wall, mm -hmm. we're unable to even turn around to see the light around us. You know, recently, I had the privilege of reading a book which had been authored by, I think, Professor Jima Boedi. I'm sure you are familiar with that book. A book on the Achenpong era. Okay. And I was fascinated about his treatment of, 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 the, of Ghana's indebtedness in 1972, 73, 74. The entire. Yes. <laughs> I mean, read that book, the analysis, the, the scientific analysis and so on. You know that that got us huge reliefs. Reliefs that up to today, no country has ever been able to secure. Mm -hmm. Just the method that the Achampong government applied, you know, in dealing with our indebtedness and so on. And yet today, you hear people still making jokes about Yen Chua and so on. I would recommend very strongly that people read the analysis of Professor Jima Boedi, you know, in that book. It, it, it's a fantastic piece. Now, here is a champion thinking outside the box and making arguments, you know, which, which make a lot of sense and which puts Western financial institutions on trial, okay? Now, the first arguments were actually made by President Fidel Castro of, of Cuba in the early 1970s when he went to the non line movement and argued that these debts were unpayable and that we pay these debts at our own peril, and that what we ought to do is to refuse completely to pay the debts. One of the examples which have been used over the years is, is, is Zahir and that Mubutu Sisiseko. When the Western financial institutions were giving loans to Zahir and the Mubutu Sisiseko, they knew that Zahir was not in a position to pay, and yet they kept pumping these loans to Zahir. Mm -hmm. The only reason why they did that was that they saw Zaire as the bastion against the spread of communism. Mm -hmm. So these laws were intended to achieve the foreign policy objectives of the West. It had nothing to do with the development of Zaire, uh, it had nothing to do with the realization of the aspirations of the people of Zaire and so on. Why do you call the people of Zaire to pay loans which mm -hmm. serve your foreign policy interests and so on? 
Now, besides, the other very strong argument is that these loans are not payable. How do we pay them? We don't have the resources to pay them. If you take the United States of America, the United States of America is more indebted than Ghana. You know, it's, it's heavily indebted. It's more indebted than Ghana. Why is the debt not a burden for the United States of America? The debt is not a burden for the United States of America because the United States borrows in dollars. Mm -hmm. It owes in dollars. Okay? How does the U.S. deal with its debt crisis? Simply printing more mm -hmm. currency. Mm -hmm. You understand? When we have to deal with our indebtedness, we have to produce goods and services that we can sell in dollars in order to be able to pay. Why is this so? This is so simply because mm, the dollar has become the currency of preference in international trade and international transactions. Okay? If that situation were altered, our debt would not be such, 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 such a gruesome burden on us as well. But we are just talking about how to increase VAT, how to introduce e-levy, how to confiscate people's earnings and so on in order to go and pay debt. So the fundamental problem itself is left intact. Now, Randy, we are having these discussions at a time when the foreign exchange retention agreements we signed with mining companies is still in effect. We signed foreign exchange retention agreements with mining companies which enables mining companies to keep 98% of the total value of the minerals they, they take out of your country, outside your economy. Only 2% comes into your economy. You are heavily indebted. In trying to find solutions to your, your indebtedness, you are not looking at this obnoxious agreement. And why would you not get into debt if 98% of the value of minerals taken out of your country are kept outside your economy? You are obviously going to get into debt. So we are not looking at the structural problems. The other thing that I like to talk about, I've been speaking about for the last 40 years. Randy, if you take the relief map of Ghana, mm -hmm. the relief map of Ghana, not the political map, take the relief map of Ghana, there's something which is so striking. Up to today, mm -hmm. all our functioning rail lines start from any areas of concentration of wealth, hmm? timber, gold, mm -hmm. diamond, bauxite, and so on, where do they end up? The port. The port. The mm -hmm. whole infrastructure was built for extraction of wealth. That whole infrastructure, from the colonial days. That is still the situation today. Why would you not run into that? So there ought to be some new thinking. And I'm not seeing that new thinking. You know, I'm not hearing people discuss the new thinking. You know, we are all caught up in this small box, not just in this small box, but in a small corner of the small box. That's where we are doing all our thinking. And things keep getting worse all the time. I mean, somebody should explain to me why we are still importing clinker to produce cement. Somebody must explain to me. When it has been established by the, the CSIR, I suppose, that's the name, CSIR, that there are many, many viable alternatives locally. Why are we still importing Krinka? So if you don't change this mindset, we will continue to have these problems. You come to the construction industry, and today it is, it is, it is laughable building all these monstrous structures and now the tendency is to go for glass buildings and so does it make sense first of all your abosso glass factory has collapsed you don't produce the glass okay secondly these glass buildings require air conditioning which you don't produce it's not. so the whole thing is just madness Madness. Madness is responsible for our suffering. And somehow, we have to get leaders who would attempt to get out of this madness. Otherwise, we are in it. Every, every quarter, tariffs are going to go up. Every quarter. 
the value, the real value of wages and salaries will continue to dip. So where do we end? Crisis upon crisis.